This is building the new CNC machine. And this build is the four foot by eight foot kit from CNC Rider Parts. And in a few weeks, I'll be adding on the vertical table at the end. But for this build, this is just the, the basic four by eight build. I'll start by building the base, which are the legs and the platform for the machine. Now I think one of the biggest questions on the last video where I moved the old machine out was why I was doing this. And at one level, sort of sort of the flippant answer is, well, why wouldn't I do it? <laughs> so there were sort of three ways, probably more, but let's say three ways to go with the old machine. I could continue to use it and continue to upgrade bits of it here and there, like getting a new spindle which was probably the big thing that I wanted to do with it. Or I could sell that old machine and start all over again and build a new machine based on what I had learned from the first build. And I'll admit, for this video, that would probably have been the most interesting option. Or the third option was to get a kit and not worry so much about figuring out how to make a better machine, but just get a kit machine and build something that's sort of more of a standard. And that's the route that I'm on. And I guess in thinking about that too, the real value of the first machine wasn't so much the machine itself, it was what I learned in building it. And that hasn't gone anywhere. That story is still, is still around and still exists, and all of that knowledge still exists. And I guess another rationalization I can come up with as well is that that old machine was, was kind of a kit in a, in a way as well as all of the parts I had ordered and I was just putting parts together. It was just that I came up with that kit. It's not as different as it, it might seem as far as a build goes. So I can put the legs together. And really, this is a big erector set. It's all just parts that are already cut to length, and it's just a matter of putting the screws in and putting the pieces together. And it all went just fine. The only thing that was a little bit of a headache was the ball-nosed Allen key I got. That was the, the size that was used for most of the bolts. I realized towards the end, I think, was a little bit bent so it wobbled as I tightened bolts up. And what would happen is it would get stuck in some of the connections. And it was sort of frustrating because I, I couldn't move along real quickly and tighten up bolts. I would, I'd tighten one up and it would come out okay. And then I'd tighten the next one up and I'd, I would have to tap the Allen key out with, with the hammer because it would get stuck and kind of wedged in place. But I think that was the, the fault of the Allen key, not the system. <laughs> So with the legs and putting the supports on, I decided to do them upside down so the supports would actually help hold the legs up. Then when I got all of those put together, I could turn them over. I thought about doing the whole frame upside down and then flipping the whole frame or the whole base over at once. But I decided that once the legs were together, it might be easier to then work on it right side up. Although I think doing the whole thing upside down is also an option. So I got the legs on one end, then I lifted the two sides up with a cart and I could put the, the middle set of legs in. So they need to be slid in from the end, the way that the connectors work. And I could take the cart out and I move the cart around to the end and I could slide the legs into the middle. Then I could put the legs on the, on the far end and I could tighten up all the connections. So we can see the whole process of making the base in one take and where I'm putting the camera from the, from the previous section. <laughs> Lots of thinking going on. With this, it wasn't complicated, but 
depending on the order and sort of the process and what parts you're holding and what parts you're not holding, it can either be straightforward or frustrating. It's a simple thing to do, but to sort of do it in the right order made it easier, I think. <laughs> so then all of the cross members needed to go on. So I slid those into place and tighten them up. So now that the base is together, I can start getting ready to put the gantry on. So I need the linear rails and the racks for the rack and pinion on the sides. To put the linear rails on, you need to put in a screw every few inches. So there were a lot to put in. So I started by putting in each screw and putting in each little slider piece and getting the rails ready to go on. This was gonna take forever. I rotated the rail and I just dropped all the screws in really quickly. And this went a lot faster. Then with the, the screws in place, I could then put the, the little slider nut on right, right down the row, which made it quicker. Then on the other side, I took this a step further and I, I put all the screws in and I laid out all the, the slider nuts so I could just go along and just put them together really quickly all the way down the rail. And this made it quite fast. So once all the nuts are in place, the rail has to be slid on to the, to the full length of the table. Now these have to be attached in exactly the right spot. It's not so much that they have to be attached in the, in the right spot, it's that each end has to be the same. So you clamp a jig to each end and tighten up the bolts with that jig in place. And with the, with the length of these, I did it in the middle as well, so that any sag in the rail would be taken care of. Because you want the rail and the top of the table to be perfectly parallel, so that the, the movement of the gantry will be parallel to the table. So once those rails are in place, I can put the rack for the rack and pinion in place. And that's the same idea, where, where you're sliding the racks onto the sides and then you tighten up the bolts. Now this comes in two pieces. So you use the rack from the gantry to line up the two pieces along the Y axis. And I checked the table to make sure it was planar. And I had to adjust the feet a little bit to get the, the two strings in the middle to just touch. And if the two strings just touch, then the table should be flat. Now I'll build the gantry. And I can open up a whole new set of boxes. So the first thing to go on are the linear rails. And these are what's, what the gantry will ride along, along the Y axis. So those fit over the, the rails that were attached previously. And they get a little grease. Then once those are attached, the end caps go on so that those linear rails can't fall off. Then the brackets for the gantry attach to the linear rails. And these brackets then hold the vertical part of the gantry. And it's a whole bunch of bolts. <laughs> so with this, it's just adding pieces to this vertical section. Now, a lot of the first machine was also CNC router parts. parts. The, the motors and the, the motor mounts and the, the Z-axis. Even in that sense, it's really not that different. What's new with this new machine is that the, the details and the, and the way things go together is a little more thought out and a, a little less homemade. <laughs> Once the vertical section's put together, the beam of the gantry can be put on.
This is probably the heaviest thing to lift in the whole process. And it's really not too bad. And it can be attached. Now it's a similar process on the gantry as it was on the sides, where I add the rack and the rails for the linear rail. And the stops at each end, so the z-axis won't fall off. <laughs> Then the plate that the z-axis mounts to. Now here I tightened up the bolts on the upper linear rail with the jigs I used on the sides. Then once this plate was in place, I then tightened up the bolts on the lower linear rail. So I would know that the two rails are parallel all the way across the gantry. Then it was time to unpack the motors and build the motor mounts. Now one of the big differences between this machine and the old machine is that the motors are bigger and this will make the machine faster. With a bigger, stronger spindle on this machine, I can push it at faster speeds and cut more at a time. So I put the gears onto the motors. I used my clamp as a little makeshift press to help push that that gear onto the shaft. Then I can attach the motor to the motor arm, I guess I would call it. And this sequence was exactly the same as it was in the previous machine, because it's the same motor arms with bigger motors. And so the, there's a gear that takes a belt from the motor to the big gear which is attached to a littler gear that runs along the rack that went along the sides of the machine. And there's a, a cam bolt, I guess I would call it, next to the motor that allows you to tighten up the belt. And with this build, I found the instructions to how to do all this. I think in the last build, I was figuring it out based on the parts and kind of how things fit together. So with this build, I think I got the, the belt tension better and the, the spring tension better on the springs. And because I was following what, what you were actually supposed to be doing <laughs> instead of just figuring it out. Then the motor that runs the x-axis, and it's attached the same way, it's just flipped 90 degrees. Then I can attach the z-axis, and this just mounts as a piece to that plate that was put on the gantry. And this is just a newer version of what I had before. What's nice about this version is the motor actually doesn't go up and down, so the, the motor's not lifting itself as the z-axis moves. You can see the wobble in my Allen key. I think it's bent a little bit. It was weird that I didn't really notice that when I was putting it together, but here in the video it's really obvious. So this is the motor for the z-axis, and it goes up on the top, and it attaches to the end of a threaded rod, which then moves the spindle up and down. Now it was at about this point, when I was starting to think about where the cables were gonna go, that I thought about it and realized I probably wanted the machine turned around 180 degrees. So the computer would be at the other end, and the open end with the vertical table would be at the end where the computer used to be, which made a lot more sense, and it put the electronics boxes up against the, the short wall. The side of the machine that I kind of wanted all of the, the power coming from and all of the, the wires to be on. So I flipped the machine around 180 degrees and started putting in the cable trays and the cable tracking, basically plugging it in. <laughs> it's funny that in the last machine, I had all the same parts as I'm doing now, it's just that I had to figure it out. I sort of knew that I needed to have a bolt here and it needed to be in space here to hold this other thing, but I had to just kind of jerry-rig it. Whereas with this, there's a part for that, but it's all the same stuff. <laughs> I think with the old machine, I had pushed the dimensions trying to make everything as big as possible. And I think in doing that, you get to where the stiffness of the machine isn't as much as it really could be. 
because the, the lengths and the, the sizes of things have gotten too long. That machine worked just fine, but it, it wasn't as rigid and as stiff as it could be for a 4x8 machine. The gantry was a, a little wider than it needed to be to fit a, a four foot wide sheet of plywood under it. So there was a little more twisting in the gantry than, than there needed to be. And the height of the Z axis was really more than was necessary. And that, so that long arm of the, the Z axis meant that there, were, there was more room for, for movement within, the, within that arm. So this machine will be stouter and only as big as it needs to be. So you can see how the cable track kind of follows the movement of the machine. And I can open up the cable tracks. Then I thought I should put the spindle on. I need something to plug in. <laughs> so I pulled that out. And this is a, a big reason for building this new machine, is to, to put this on it. Wow, that is not light. That is heavy. Probably weighs 25 pounds. So there's a plate that attaches to the Z movement. Then there's a plate that attaches to the spindle. Then those two plates get attached together. There's actually a lot of adjustment in the height that the spindle can be attached. So I kind of put it on where it, it felt about right, but I figure in the future it, it may get moved depending on how this, this works and feels and whether I'm doing anything that's where something's in the way or it feels like it needs to be lower or higher or, or something like that. So then I, I ran all the cables and plugged everything in and that, that was straightforward. And it actually, it took a little more time futzing around with Mach 3 and reconfiguring that and getting everything switched correctly. But when, once I had it set up right, it worked and turned on and works just fine. So the next thing to do is the table and to attach that and then I'll, I'll cut some slots in that for the hold downs. But it's basically ready to go. I, I do want to make dust collection for this. I need to figure that out. And at some point in the not too distant future, I'm going to do the vertical table at the end and add some some length to the to the long rails at the end, so that the so that the gantry can get out over the vertical table. Thanks for watching.